Okay, uh, this is a Genos LLC proprietary video demonstrating techniques used for a unreleased and uh, proprietary game engine. Uh, the project is Oddborg, and uh, this is a technology demo for Photoshop. So we're talking about the uh, the techniques used to create the tiles and how to make stuff. Uh, a few techniques in Photoshop as well. I'm gonna do this very quickly because I already did it a couple times. It's getting late and uh, I I had issues with the video, but I, I have more pieces now. Uh, I only have a segment here, so I'm gonna move the the screen over, and you can kind of see that this is a Photoshop image. It's actually an image that is uh, 3,072 pixels long. You can't see the entirety of it. Let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, you might be able to. Uh, there we go. So this is a uh, zoomed out version of a very, very large image. If I zoom all the way in, you can see how much detail there is. And this is a one-to-one -one ratio uh, on 1900 by 1200. So you're seeing a very detailed image. And this is the level of detail we're shooting for. Uh, for 1900 by 1200. Um, the size of the character would be about the size of this image. That would be a, like a large character in the game. Uh, a smaller character, like a human, uh, would be of a diminishing size and the, the protagonist would be about two-thirds of this size. So that's what we're shooting for there. Uh, we're not 100% on all of that, but that looks like what we're going to do. We have to do some unit tests but we'll get to that. So, uh, if we can't do it in that size, we'll simply scale the graphics. But if we make them that big, uh, it's it's better for us in the long run. Okay, so uh, this is actually a well-developed uh, tool that I've, I'm showing you here. Uh, basically, let me show you all of the tools that I'm using. So we have uh, these different images and they're set up in different ways and show different parts of the process. Um, here we have the main uh, sizing chart and we want to use this PSD file uh, as often as possible to kind of compare items uh, and maybe store finished pieces uh, so that we can save them in a big library of pieces like 50 or 70 or 100 layers uh, I've gotten the layer numbers up pretty high and it's good to have a lot of layers in one big file because you can pick and choose and then export a single image uh, and then fiddle with the images that you've exported later. So here we have uh, this. You can think of each of these uh, ruling areas. You see the ruler here. Uh, it's in uh, a blue color. Maybe I can change the color really quick. Uh, probably not. Uh, so these are the rulers. Uh, this is a 1024 by 1024 pixel image. Here we have a 512 by 512 quarter. And then that can be quartered into 256 by 256 pieces. Uh, to really get the precision uh, necessary to do this work, you have to zoom all the way in and make sure that the rulers end up at the exact right pixel locations. So here we have uh, a zoomed in version you can see that it's exactly at 256 now that should pretty much work for us but sometimes it'll be off by one pixel or so not a big deal but sometimes does affect the work and that kind of precision has to be paid attention to so here we have the image that I was just describing and it has been segmented and you can sort of tell that uh, there are these different size segments and here you can see that this particular piece is about 256 tall uh, or no actually that might be yeah that's 256 so the largest image in OpenGL that you can have in a texture is pretty much 1024 by 1024 so in order to do something at this high of a resolution we have to segment everything into smaller pieces and uh, obviously we wouldn't want to use the entire you can only have a few at that size. So uh, other textures at, at a smaller size, you know, you can have a larger texture, I think up to 4096 or something like that. But those 
have serious performance drain. So we want to keep it uh, at about 1024 by 1024 is the maximum size of a single object. Uh, on on you know lower resolution machines, we'll try to have a fallback position that's about half the resolution, and so uh, that should help us and help those people who don't have the computing power to run it at the highest detail level. Okay, moving on. Uh, again, trying to get this done quickly. So, you see this piece here, and you can make pieces like that that fit together, but they have to wrap uh, from from left to right and right to left. So let me show you quickly how you wrap a piece. So, I know this piece has a precise size. I believe it's... No, it does not have a precise size. Okay. So, we know that this is around the size that we want. So we're going to put this into its own image, and we're going to see how big the image is by doing an image size operation. And you can see that it's kind of close to 512 uh, by 256. It's a little off. So you'll pick it like this, and then uh, turn off constrained proportions, and do 256. So you have 512 by 256. These are powers of 2. So that's optimal for OpenGL. Now, it's not required, but in most cases, you would want to stick to this. Uh, uh, because it helps me calculate things when doing stuff and also it helps OpenGL uh, waste less memory. So 512 by 256, click OK, and it's scaled slightly. Now that probably won't uh, impact the final image, but there's connector pieces that have to be established here. So I wouldn't just do one of these, I would actually do many of them. And I would do them all at the same time. Uh, so that they, I knew that they fit together. What we really are doing is creating kind of little Lego sets. And the sets will fit together and work within each other, and they might work with other pieces, but uh, we have to create new connectors whenever we bring together two types of terrain. So here we have a nice big piece, um, and I'll show you how to wrap, uh, so let me finish the wrapping thing. So, I, I don't want to demonstrate a technique that doesn't make sense. So this piece is very close uh, to uh, the edges here and if it can't really go up and down and so uh, a piece that this might fit into may not have the exact same dimensions that this piece has uh, but where it ends up has to be the same. So you would actually do this in a large set. You would have uh, maybe uh, 32 layers uh, at some size and you made it so that they all fit together and then you uh, exported them all at once and 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 th that's sort of the method that has to be used you you make a set and then you take the set and you make the next version of that entire set it, it sounds uh, more complicated than it is uh, but so we have this so then there's a, a thing where you you paste so, so you take the whole thing, and you paste it, uh, making a duplicate, and then you paste a third duplicate, and you bring them back like that. So you know that the edges, uh, if you tie them together in the layer tool, you can move them at the same time. So you can see that the edges, uh, where the edges are, now you can bring a, a guide down and say, okay, well the edges, they fit together sort of there. Okay, so, so now you've got this end piece okay and it fits into this end piece okay so uh, so but the, the the middle doesn't make sense however underneath these two pieces is a third piece so if we use a brush that uh, has uh, flared edges so about uh, that's a 100 pixel brush uh, we can erase segments until it makes sense again right so um, so there you go that made sense and that sort of makes sense too but we can we can do that with it and uh, and now we have a piece that fits together it takes a moment for the eyes to adjust but that actually probably will will fly although there is this little curve here but that kind of plays into the idea that it's a a sand dune or something. So uh, you sort of massage it until it looks like that and now you've got a wrapping piece so or rather a piece that fits together you do not have a wrapping piece yet 
So you want to use Control Shift C to capture it and duplicate it. Now you have that piece. Now to make it wrap, you take it and you do that with it, and then you duplicate that and you move this over to here, and you can see that they fit together perfectly. So you know that this wraps now. So it wraps within itself, but it doesn't wrap with everything. Moving back to the original copy that we made by backing up, we can see that there's, uh, so we know it wraps and it wraps well. Uh, but these end pieces can be reused. So if I grab another segment to make, so let me duplicate this real quick. It's always good to make duplicates and then get rid of unnecessary garbage, right? So we'll du duplicate that and then we'll go back to our image and we'll grab a different piece like this piece okay and we, we don't even have to be precise at this step okay so you grab it at this step and you've got something it's in the same scale and now you're going back to your wrapping piece and you pasted it in there and you know it's not the same and in fact not even the same filter has been run on it but you use that f like flared brush and you kind of eliminate uh, anything that uh, you don't want so you make it look like a whole thing again okay so there so now you have uh, a variation okay and it'll also fit in with the one that doesn't have the variation right so you could add like a, you could add some clip art here uh, go online go to uh, open clipart.org you know and you could think to yourself what what's on this planet I mean you could also draw this okay there's definitely a place here where you could draw but let, let's just for for uh, for the point of this demo we're gonna go to skull and uh, we, we'll just pick a something that looks like uh, it would be lying in this sort of a sand area so we've got this skull here okay not bad what happens when we drag it okay that's fine we're gonna use multiply okay that doesn't make sense let's invert it okay now we've got uh, the ability to scale it and then of course using a transform we can lie it down like that give it the illusion of depth and now you have uh, a skull uh, in this one okay but we have it as a layer so we can make different variations with the skull even right? So this is how you slowly build a world that is permutated, or whatever word you should use there, that has all these different nuances and details that uh, sort of, you know, play into uh, uniqueness in this uh, environment, okay? Now, of course, there is going to be some repetition for the user, but the idea is to increase the number of these interesting points so that the fun factor is increased. So that's one technique. The next thing I wanted to talk about briefly is here we have uh, a, a segment we know that it's exactly 3072 which happens to be uh, 2048 plus 1024 in length. We have it segmented into 512 by 512 blocks so we can see that there's these six blocks there and then you can select an area okay well this is a, actually a power of two and then this is a power of two uh, so uh, you can select there you can select there uh, and now you have chunks that you can export that are within the limit of 1024 by 1024 uh, but the entire image is bigger than 1024 by 1024 another thing of note is that you can take a piece that's this big okay and you can kind of just create a quick uh, 1900 by 1200 if you want to test it in the engine okay all right and uh, you can paste okay so now you've got that and then you can grab that thing that we just wrapped which of course has been slightly resized okay so it's not going to be perfect but you can paste it in here, okay, and sort of overlap a little bit, and then use that brush, right? And now you've got an area that has a different effect, and there's a transition area, okay? Uh, 
too much there. All right, undo. All right. Um, okay, so it's not perfect. I wouldn't actually accept this uh, because it's, you know, personally I would redo this or figure out another way because this transition. I, actually, what I would do is I would capture this color and draw the thing over it so that it covered it up a little bit better. And then you've got uh, this larger piece, I'll zoom out so you can see it, uh, that now fits into this. And since this fits into uh, other ones of these, you know on this end, now you have an end piece that fits onto a, a larger set of pieces. So you can tie that part of the level in. And so this is how the entire game is going to be made as far as the level is concerned. There's animations for characters, but this is how the environments can be created. Now, there's some other aspects to the environment that I'll cover briefly since I'm on a roll. So there's that technique. There's obviously other techniques to create kind of pseudo 3D looking uh, and, and CG looking graphics. Let me just bring that up. Uh, as soon as I can find it in a mess of files. Here we go. And I better save this. This is uh, ground segment uh, one. Naming of things. Usually I randomly name it while I'm working, and then when I'm done, I go back and carefully rename things, including naming the air, uh, layers, because that really helps to keep notes so the next time you, you visit the Photoshop file, you know what you're doing. Um, anyway. We have this segment. Uh, this segment is a complete segment and it does not connect, but let's just pretend for a second, uh, or let's forget about that for a second and, and look at, uh, at at what we've added here. So we have uh, we have this image actually is where that came from. And uh, this is uh, something where I've used bevel and emboss to create this kind of fluid-like goo that I can draw with and uh, you can imagine so in this game uh, in the engine we'll add like a glowing ball here uh, for instance or uh, maybe something that moves up like uh, electricity that moves up this thing uh, or something that that can be added later using pixel drawing techniques and lines and, and polygons uh, to create an effect that way so uh, you can't give me a piece this big but if it was for instance this tree you would give me as little as possible so that it's isolated so essentially you would give me that and uh, then I could place this or you could place this if you're designing levels uh, uh, anywhere so it can kind of create this illusion of of um, of having that tree there and you can see that the bevel and emboss has created interesting effects this took several layers to create but uh, it's certainly uh, one technique and of course I added the uh, this is also a bevel and emboss thing that, that kind of a vine that goes around this thing so this is how you can kind of create a uh, an experience uh, in a game that that uh, is unique for creating these planets. So this was one technique. So I would start fresh the next day with you know some other technique. Um, it would look similar, but it would have definitely different qualities. Another technique that you can use is to go and grab images like this skull off the Open Clip Art Library, or you can even go to images.google.com if you want to. I don't know, play some Russian roulette, and you can. Uh, select something like uh, horse right and then you would take the horses like pieces of the, of the horse or even uh, sometimes I have looked at an image where there's like some grass and, a, and an effect that I want to recreate and I'll play with that part of the image in a filter but uh, you don't want to go too far in there but if you take a small piece and then you mash it and screw with it it pretty much becomes fair use like you couldn't use this image but you might be able to use, say, uh, you know, this area, uh, and then mash mash it up or invert it or stretch it or whatever. Uh, here we have uh, great grass that we could use. Now it's not very high resolution, so that's an an, an issue. Also, it doesn't ha it has to have a neutral background, so this would actually be better source material. 
Let me show you what I would do with this. Uh, the image again isn't very high, uh, high, but high resolution. But let me just uh, put it in here for a second and show you another technique. So you have a picture of a horse, but we actually don't want the horse. We just want the grass and the flowers. So we pick the side that has the most neutral lighting that happens to be the smaller piece okay and now we have that we can now duplicate the smaller pieces okay and we can even flip some of them and stretch them slightly okay to essentially create this faux image right uh, obviously that part would be you know, we need to do something about that part. Okay, so now we're going to compress this all down, add that. We're going to put that right there. And then we're going to, uh, let's see, put one more over here. And now I have an extra one left over. Okay, you can see it. Okay, we're going to use that later. So we're just going to make that invisible. Go down to the layer of this. And we're going to duplicate this layer. Okay. And we're going to slide it about half the distance between these two things to the left. Um, so let me make it multiply here for you. And you can see it's about half the distance there. Alright, now we're going to make that solid again. And we're going to erase small pieces. So let's go with a 17 brush. We're going to zoom in and uh, I'll just show you the technique here you sort of blend it right and you're kind of playing the artist you know and you're you're doing that and uh, it's a pretty good seam so the seam is fixed okay now you got this seam here well, let's let's make that non-symmetric um, asymmetric let's uh, let's fix the sky here there might be some artifacts, but we want to pretty much eliminate any seams, okay? And now we've got, uh, look for duplicate flowers. You, you wouldn't want duplicate flowers, so just kind of smudge it. Now, it was in black and white, so this is actually to our favor. You can take any image, of course, and make it black and white. Uh, if I zoom out, now you can see there's imperfections. Now, obviously, we have backgrounds. Uh, in the game we don't need the background so we're gonna uh, cut around the edges okay uh, creating some top you know issues or oops um, there we go right. little, little top ridges rather not issues there are some issues when I do that alright so then kinda move and uh, slowly click all right you get to the very end okay. okay it wasn't perfect so we're gonna go back this time I'm gonna use the um, lasso tool uh, just to grab around the edges and then I'm going to minus lasso uh, around here. Okay. Alright, so you lassoed. So then we're going to cut this part of this and the underlying image. Okay, and we're going to get rid of the horse for a minute. Always save your source somewhere in there, uh, but, you know, eventually delete it, but whatever. Um, okay. Now we've got just the flowers, and some of them are a little symmetric, and we have this piece that we have to integrate. So let's let's erase, oops, let's erase parts of this piece. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab the region, delete that, and erase this piece here. Okay, now it's a little well, that didn't quite do what we wanted there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, so it's a little symmetric in there, but it's not too bad. You might be able to find some detail if you go in there a little bit. All right, now we're going to color it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So the next layer, green, multiply, or color, have a color. Um, 
you know it's a little neon so maybe change the color a little bit okay I like that um, obviously uh, we want to make the grass greener than the flower uh, but that works too I mean if you think about it that could look like a kind of like well all right change the color again and then you can erase parts around the flower to kind of re-reveal the flower as a white flower uh, you want to use a brush that's approximately the size like usually a little bigger than it but uh, anyway you go through here and uh, this is the painstaking part you sort of do that over and over again and okay so then you have this segment you know pretend I did it on all the flowers I normally would but you know whatever okay so then you gotta wrap the segment right now we can overlay a little bit to do a wrap actually no we can't what am I talking about ideally you don't overlay at all but you'd have to wrap again but you can get away with stuff by double overlaying and then we'll grab a larger brush and remove this okay and now we have you can kind of see where it duplicated itself so you want to kind of if it already seam if there's already a seam you have to kind of match parts of the seam alright so now you have a wrappable bush or grass uh, tile with a flat bottom and one way or one technique is to use the shift key and draw in black to fade the bottom out and then if the bottom is faded out you can actually use this as an overlay of another tile so uh, let me demonstrate how that works uh, so here we have our scratch board where we're just testing if the pieces get can stick together properly so we'll paste that in there and we'll stick it up here and we'll say um, lighten and you can see you know how it's going to end up looking in there. Uh, you can do color burn. That doesn't work. Let's see. Hard light. Well, that reveals something. Um, what if we invert that? Uh, see, one of the issues is that in OpenGL, what it will do is something like that. Uh, but there's a couple of other options for us. We can do. Also, you could do darken to use it as a wrappable segment <clears throat> on a wrapping segment. So then they both wrap at the same point. Uh, right, so uh, let's try. There you go. So now you've got that segment that you can take out of there. You know, and you just play with it in different ways like that. So you have, so in that case, you have two wraps stuck on each other. So you have to kind of do that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so you know that it meets end to end and uh, you can create all sorts of effects that way and that that's what we're doing so let me zoom in there Oops. actually let me let me grab that area and then show you how it fits together uh, okay there's one and there's two and you can see they fit together but they didn't fit together perfectly so you would probably want to get a third one stick the third one in there and then erase fade transition kind of thing so there you go uh, however it ends up as long as the ends fit together and again the ends don't fit together so you would actually have to invert uh, this one so that it so that it did that and that's not too bad and you'll get this effect and you've seen that in games before but if you want to make it even better you would zoom in to fix the seam basically um, move this. there we go so you can see you, you've probably seen that in old video games and that's kinda of like where the alien came from from Giger uh, all you would need to do is go in and erase a segment uh, so that it was no longer quite so obvious uh, maybe do that or something but you have to stay on the one side of the line you see so 
it's hard to see that, but that's not too bad. And it's gamey. You see that stuff in games sometimes. So, etc. That's how you make those things, and that's how we make the backgrounds, the, the static backgrounds. Now, uh, wrapping up, it's been like a half an hour. There's a, uh, a, a point at which uh, you can, like, say you grab an image off Google of an old computer okay and here's one um, you could use this as like a circuit board in the new world because it's not high enough of a resolution you can come in to one of these things you know and, and take that and cut it out and that becomes a tile um, another thing is that if you want it to glow like if you wanted this to glow uh, like it would in real life, uh, but in the movie magic kind of way, you paste that in there, zoom in, right, move this over here, and you kind of, you know, without cutting it out, because you would have to cut it out, you could um, take the segment that you wanted to have it glow, and it doesn't have to be in this case because it's a special effect and there's like probably only one or two it doesn't have to be power of two but it would have to be in the same scale so that I could just apply it perfectly like that same pixels you know same number of pixels overlaid and then uh, getting rid of the computer part use your curves tool Right. to eliminate the 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 noise in the blacks okay until it was uh, just the words right so now let me get rid of the background stuff that's in the background so now you've got something that you can add on if we imagine overlay or it's not a good example multiply no soft light no hard mix no. um, hmm. well I don't think Photoshop actually does the thing that OpenGL does but I believe it may it does add yeah add so linear dodge is what it does or yeah so that would be the segment of the image that we would replace see so then we could make this image get lighter and darker and then you would go back to your original image right so you know where it is and you would wanna probably snip around the inside and make it perfectly dark or if you wanted to leave the the fade on that would be fine too but you would probably want to recreate it so I'll just pretend I've perfectly uh, done this but I would perfectly do it uh, using the polygon tool and I would essentially Cut that out, right? Oops. Uh, oops. There we go. Cut that out. Okay, and now we have it separated. So we have two images that work together, and this is how you can imagine. Now, obviously, we could put an animation uh, done maybe by the computer, uh, the program rather, uh, the game program, not the computer that we're looking at, uh, and we could also maybe. Uh, if we if, so the easiest thing we could do is have this be blinking we could also make it get brighter and darker using a tween so be more like like that I guess or it's the wrong image like that right and it would smoothly transition between these various like kind of like that but faster so we, we can do that stuff uh, quite easily. We could make, we could add something onto it that, let's say, uh, was glowing. Uh, like that. Okay, so that would actually be a separate image and I can create a glow if you look down at, in this area. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Let me undo. Well, Anyway, you get the point. 
I can do those things quite easily in the engine uh, just to add something that pulses, that has a pulsing light is not an issue. You could also do other things where like an, a small film played in here. So there's lots of options and opportunities uh, for us to explore these, these ideas. And uh, that's what we hope for. So take care. There'll be another one of these eventually, uh, but that should get you rolling.